Hello, and welcome to Rogue Artisans and Crafters, winner of the 2018 Southern Oregon Television Awards for Best Arts and Culture Show. I'm your host, David Glamour Dave Nienow. Typically with our show, we feature local artists and craftspeople from within Southern Oregon and invite you, our viewer, to learn about the artists and their art life story. But today we are taking the opportunity to present to you, our viewer, the story of one of our local art galleries based here in the Rogue Valley. This feature gallery show is the second of what will be planned of several local gallery features throughout 2018. Art galleries serve an important role for artists. They serve as a bridge to the public, introducing artists and the variety of art media that they work in. They help to educate the public about art in general and the variety of art and artists that can be discovered. The art gallery helps to build an artist's name, recognition, and add legitimacy to the quality of the work that an artist produces. The Road Valley is privileged to have several quality art galleries that can be discovered and explored. Our gallery to be featured today is Art and Soul Gallery in Ashland. And to talk about Art and Soul Gallery, I'm pleased to welcome artist and a gallery director, Linda Hoffman Snodgrass, to the show. And so welcome to the show, Linda. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And representing Art and Soul. Well, it's uh, been a really uh, wonderful gallery. I've visited it several times and really enjoy the quality of, of art and the artists uh, to be found there. So I'm happy to, uh, to give the gallery some exposure through the show. Thank you. So to begin with, um, how long has the gallery been in existence? The gallery opened its doors to the public in October of 1998. Okay. So we are celebrating our 20th year this, this October. Wow, well congratulations. That's a, that's a pretty good run for a gallery. It is. Particularly for here in the Road Valley. So uh, that's really cool. So uh, typically, uh, well, to begin with, how many artists are to be found uh, in your gallery right now? Currently we represent 26 artists. Okay. And we do have room for a few more, so we are open to applications. Okay, and um, uh, how does the gallery go about finding uh, the artists that it represents? We actually have a application form right, okay. that an artist can come in and pick up at the gallery. Right, okay. And it is also available at our website online where they can submit an application online as well. Okay. And, um, you know, as uh, I know that there are different types of gallery operations, so how is this gallery? Uh, organized in, in the way it operates? This gallery is a limited liability corporation and it's owned and operated by four individuals who happen to be artists. We call ourselves the directors. Right, okay. And and you happen to be one of those directors? I am one of the directors, okay. yes. And who are the other uh, directors of the gallery? Judy Richardson, Linda Budikoff, and Eve Marco Withrow. Okay. And um, uh, now most of the, uh, from what I've, uh, in visiting the gallery, most of the, of the artists that you have featured are more like uh, watercolor, oil, pastel kinds of media artists. We do fine art only, representational, two-dimensional okay. art. We, uh, as long as it can be hung on a wall. Right. So there's not, uh, there's no sculptures or jewelry to be found. No. Uh, or other kinds of three-dimensional kinds of, of craft uh, kinds of art. Correct. Okay. On occasion, the featured artist, if they work in another medium, such as ceramics or bronze or something like that, mm -hmm. they can place it in the front window during their featured show. Oh, okay. All right. And uh, and uh, uh, how many uh, feature shows do you do? Is it like a monthly thing per artist? Every or? month we have a featured artist, that, and the opening is the same, the opening reception is the same as the first Friday studio walk. Okay. So we'll have music and goodies and. Okay. And the first Friday uh, art walk, that's something that's specific to Ashland. It is. Right, and that's something that's organized through the, the Ashland Gallery Association, is that correct? correct? Okay. Correct, Art and Soul Gallery is a member of the Ashland Gallery Association. Right. Okay. And so we take part in that every month. Right, and uh, the uh, and the association publishes a uh, kind of like an annual publication, right? The Ashland Gallery Guide. Yeah, and that's <laughs> been that's a really cool uh, guide. It's actually been pretty uh, helpful to me uh, for for this show because I uh, I use that guide to uh, to track down and find the artists that uh, I invite onto the show. 
and this is the Art and Souls Gallery's listing page right. in the Ashland Gallery okay. Guide. Okay, yeah, all right. And um, uh, so we have a, a selection of, of images representing the various artists uh, that can be found in the gallery. Uh, and so there's 26 uh, representational images, uh, one for each of the artists uh, found Great. in the gallery. And so if the control room could uh, uh, begin to, to start loading up those, um, and we will uh, talk a little bit about what we're seeing here. So um, there's uh, uh, Tom. Tom Doffage. Doffage, yeah. And um, uh, now that's like a, a Western kind of a scene. Does Tom do a lot of Western kind of a? Uh, he does a lot of landscapes. Um, mostly images that are that are representational of things that you will see going out into the world I and mean, he, he's done street scenes and uh, you'll okay. see a lot of wildlife and wilderness work with his okay all right cool images all right. paintings. so let's uh let's head on to the next sue bennett and uh, she's in jacksonville and uh so she does a little bit of, of everything, it seems, uh, pastel. And well, Sue Bennett uh, was an art instructor at Central uh, Oregon. She works predominantly in oil and watercolor, though I, I have seen her do a couple little pastels. Yeah, yeah. Uh, pastel is not a medium that she predominantly produces right. artwork in, and she is an award-winning artist. Oh, great. Okay, so let's uh, go on to uh, the next uh, image, and uh, Steve Bennett. Steve Bennett is the significant other of Sue Bennett, yeah. and he uh, recently won a award at the American Pastel Society show in New York, wow. and went back there to receive his award. Oh, he great. is a fabulous, fabulous pastel artist. He also works in oil painting. Yeah, okay. And uh, so let's uh, go on to the next, uh, Penny Simons. Uh, Penny's actually one of the first artists that I've uh, found uh, when I first started researching uh, local artists to try and get featured on the show. Uh, and I really uh, uh, enjoy her work. Uh, she has a really uh, classical approach to her oil work. That she does, and Penny Simmons now works only in oil. Yeah. Uh, she started with watercolor. Okay, and uh, let's go on to the next image. This is Pam Hans Child. She did an internship at Lassen National Monument right. through the parks, parks, National Parks. Yeah. And this was a painting that she produced as part of that stay there. Um, it's a very popular image. She does a lot of beautiful natural wildlife. And yeah, and the National Park Service has a, a national art residency kind of a program yes. for, for artists to apply to, so they can basically visit any of the national parks and and develop whatever art that, that, yes. they, that they can uh, produce. And she was at Glacier this summer. Oh wow, that's, yeah, that'd be a fun visit. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, start up with the next uh, image. Oh, Nancy Zufit. She's a graduate of the Chouinard School of Art in California. She does wonderful mixed media pieces, and you'll generally find a cat or a dog yeah. hidden somewhere in her paintings. Yeah, okay, that's always oh. cool to look for. Uh, let's go on to the next. And this is Margette Shell. Shelley. Yeah. Um, she is wonderful in her ability to illustrate and and create this beautiful art that speaks a message mm -hmm. uh, a lot of spiritual messages in her work okay yeah. she works predominantly in watercolor a little bit of ink a little bit of collage yeah. all right okay other things all right so let's uh, go on to the next Marilyn Hurst right. Marilyn Hurst started out with watercolor and has branched into pastel and does a little bit of oil work as well. Okay. Um, she also re was juried into that American Pastel Society show. Oh, wow. yeah. Which yeah, well, was huge. Yeah. Well, She's an award winner with her watercolors. Yeah, that's really good. I mean, and because being juried into any show is definitely a, a mark of the quality of work. 
yes. uh, for, for an artist. And a national show like that was huge. Yeah. And we had three artists wow, that were that, juried into that show. Well, that's really good. And that's a, a strong sign of the quality of, of artists to be found in your gallery. So yes. that's, that's a, a proud thing to, be, uh, to, to promote. So let's uh, go on to the next. That's and my that's, painting. that's yours right there. <laughs> there you are. It is. <laughs> yeah. I, I have been working in um, abstraction since the early 2000s. Right. Prior to that, I did very realistic work, and it's been a fun journey. Well, I'll let the audience know that, uh, that, uh, that you're going to be appearing on the show for a full artist feature profile on, uh, on our production on April 7th. I'm excited and about so, that. Yeah, I'll be, <laughs> it'll be fun to explore fully your, your career and your, in your life as an artist. So uh, let's go on to the next. Lori Taylor will be our featured artist for this month. And she predominantly works in watercolor. She does use ink. Okay. In some pieces. All right. And uh, let's go on to the next. This is Linda Budakoff. She's one of the directors and she does beautiful watercolor, watercolor collage. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now let's go on to the next. Judy Richardson was the other artist that received the award, or mm -hmm. not received the award, but was juried in mm -hmm. to the American Pastel Society show. And she does just wonderful, wonderful still lives yeah. and uh, scenes like that. Okay. Now let's go on to the next. Judy B. Orley does just sparkly watercolors. Yeah. That's she also taught music and did a whole series of her students with their instruments. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. So let's go on to the next. John Lambie. He is wonderful abstract um, acrylic artist, predominantly acrylics on canvas. Mm -hmm. Okay. And on to the Powerful next. work. Yeah. Joanna French is our only artist that paints on silk. Oh, okay. That would uh, seem to be uh, a difficult medium to uh, to work in, uh, based on just my own limited uh, art uh, experience. And to control, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, is there there are more. Yeah, there are this more. This is Janae Elder. Yeah. She does uh, works in oil. She also teaches. She lives here in Ashland. Right. And she uh, does beautiful still lives and portraiture and landscapes. And, uh, and what I know of Janae is that they're, uh, she's uh, among the younger artists. She, I believe she's the youngest in the yeah, gallery yeah, okay. at this time, yes. All right. And um, uh, I believe there's some uh, more, yeah. Yeah. Gloria Kastenberg, she also lives in Ashland and does incredible scenery. Yeah in oil and watercolor, okay. landscapes and cityscapes. All right. And let's go on to the next. Eve Margot yeah. Withrow, who's yeah. one of the directors, yeah. and she does these surrealistic landscapes and collage pieces okay. in acrylic and mixed media. All right. And uh, the next. Dana, uh, Dana Fagan. Dana. Yeah. She's got definitely a very unique style with uh, her animal portraiture. Of, she does. Yeah. And many of the animals that she paints are um, sanctuary rescue animals. Okay. All right. And she gives proceeds back to the, the sanctuaries. Okay. And uh, the next one? This is Connie Freebantz, and she works also in oil. She has a real dr drama in her, her paintings. You'll see a beautiful use of light in yeah. her landscapes. Okay, and uh, the next? Claire O'Harkins, and again, oil paintings. She does um, kind of dreamy uh, inside paintings and I, I, landscapes. They're just, they're wonderfully whimsical, and I just, I love her work. Yeah. Okay. Isn't it uh, fun? Yeah. And this is Christina Madden. Now, she is talented in watercolor, acrylic, oil, pastel. She is multi-talented. Yeah, that has a real neat uh, luminescence uh, look to uh, to that piece. I like that one a lot. She's also represented at the Portland Art Museum. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. And Charlotte Peterson, who's received international acclaim for her artwork. She works in watercolor. Okay. And... Uh, Carla Griffin does incredible landscapes in pastel and oil. Okay. She also does still lives. Betty Bars, who's a watercolorist. 
All right, and uh, Alex Fox, yeah. who does abstraction, okay, in oil and acrylic. Yeah. All right, and I think that is it on the uh, images that we've that of all the artists that, that can be found at your gallery. That that are there that we represent at this time. Yeah. Correct. Okay, and uh, and I believe we're kind of running. Uh, we're coming to the end of the show. Uh, that was fast. Yeah, I told you. I told you. <laughs> You know, this, this goes by pretty fast, so, um, uh, oh, I'm, we got a little bit more ex extra time? Oh, okay, all right. Well, I so, hope people do come in and, and view the artwork. Yeah, okay. And um, now, uh, what's the hours of the gallery? Uh, that the you're gallery open? is open from 10 to 6, Tuesday through Saturday, and 12 to 4 on Sundays. We are closed on Mondays. Okay, and... Uh, uh, beyond the uh, first Friday Art Walk uh, events, uh, mm -hmm. are there any other special events? Uh, that we take part in the Taste of Ashland, which is sponsored by the Ashland Gallery Association. Right, okay. Which is a real fun weekend. All right. Mm -hmm. And um, there, uh, and you guys have a website. We do. Right. Artandsoul.com. Okay. And do you have like any other social media? Like you have like a Facebook? We have a Facebook page as okay. well right. that Judy Richardson keeps up. Okay. And um, uh, there's, I think if there's, is there anything uh, that we haven't covered uh, that you think that the public needs to, to, to know about the, uh, the gallery? Well, m most of the artists, if not all of the artists right now, are from the Rogue Valley. Right. Uh, we go, right now, we represent artists from as far north as Grants Pass to Ashland. Okay. We have at times uh, represented artists from Northern California as well, but it's regional. Okay. All local talent, regional yeah. talent. Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, that's, uh, and that's what we're focused here on with the show is to kind of really give exposure to, to the artists that are in, in our Southern Oregon Road Valley region. And uh, you know, I, I in in inviting your gallery onto the show, you know, my uh, and having uh, done the feature profiles I've done so far, I've I've felt from the from the beginning that uh, that in starting this show process that the that the galleries, you know, really do an important uh, role for artists, uh, not only here in the valley but everywhere, uh, and that uh, that the galleries deserve some. Uh, quality exposure just as much as the individual artist. So, um, you know, and uh, as I've started this, uh, uh, doing this work here at RBTV and, and, and it brings me into Ashland so much, mm -hmm. um, you know, I've really uh, have made it a point to, to visit all the galleries and whatever artist studio uh, openings that are available to kind of get to really meet the artist. And, uh, and I just really enjoy uh, Art and Soul Gallery. It's like one of the first things I do when I'm downtown is come in and check you guys out. Well, thank you. You know, so uh, I'm really happy to be able to uh, get you guys some uh, some exposure to help uh, bring more people into your gallery because you, it's just a wonderful experience to see the variety of, of art to be seen. Um, is there, uh, in, in the process of you finding artists, what's like the typical uh, uh, pace at which you find new artists and bring artists into the gallery? Is, are you? Well, it's, it's really, it depends on who applies. Mm -hmm. And there's certain criteria once they've applied that the directors look at. Okay. And we will let them know if we want to meet with them further or if we're not interested at that time. Right. Um, once the gallery is full, we create a waiting list of the people that we met the second time with. Mm -hmm. And what happens there is they bring in the original artwork at presented as they would present it in the gallery. Right. And we meet with them and we talk with them and we look at the work and then they leave and the directors then make a decision mm -hmm. as to whether we want to represent them. Uh, there is criteria in the sense of we don't want to be all balanced with landscape artists right. or all still life artists or all abstracts. We want a good variety. We want a good variety of mediums. Uh, 
keep things balanced. So there's something for everyone when they come into the gallery to see and, and enjoy. Yeah, well, that's something that I notice in visiting the gallery is that there is definitely a, a wide variety of themes to be discovered. So it's just not one consistent uh, theme or style to be seen. Uh, and that makes for a cool visiting experience. Yeah. Um, uh, you've got 26 artists now. Uh, what's kind of where, where do you kind of see the maximum number of gallery artists that you think you can handle? We could probably handle about three or four more, yeah. I think. Okay. All right. So, yeah, it's uh, uh, is there um, uh, in the uh, is there, are there particular, uh, do your artists do any special other individual events that, uh, that they tie into the gallery? Um, or is it just kind of like you just, you, you just do your, like your monthly kinds of rotation? Well, the gallery cre has an exclusive for Ashland. Okay. And uh, the artists represented by the gallery can show up to two months outside of the gallery in the Ashland area. But we ask that they not show you around somewhere. Right. So the artists so that, that are, they're, they're committed to the gallery uh, for this this area. Correct. Uh, but they are free to like go into like another city and find another sure. gallery representation. Many of them show at the Rogue Gallery and yeah. like that. And uh, uh, where are we at on our time right now? Oh, okay, all right. Um, so, uh, uh, now, I've already told the audience that uh, that we're going to have you on the show uh, mm -hmm. on our April seventh uh, production, and uh, I look forward to that. And um, there's uh, 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 in your uh, uh, in your art life right now. I mean, uh, how, how active are you in the creation process as an artist in creating new pieces? I constantly thinking about that and I try to get in and do something in my studio every day. Yeah. I'm not always possible, <laughs> but well, the, the creative process is a uh, is a, a haphazard uh, thing at times. Um, you know, so uh, but uh, are are in typically for most of your artist members are they all pretty um, uh, uh, active in, in bringing in new pieces regularly? They are dedicated professionals. Um, every three months, we take the entire gallery down. We take all the artwork off the walls. We give everyone a new spot in the gallery to hang. Okay. So every three months, they have the choice of bringing in all new artwork or keeping some of what they have and bringing in new pieces or uh, continuing the showing that they they currently have right so that uh, that pretty much ensures that throughout the year I mean people coming in to visit are are uh, going to be surprised at at seeing a, a new uh, new art to be seen yes uh, and, and discover so that's really kind of a, a, a cool thing because uh, I'll tell you in in, in, uh, in the past uh, I've seen some galleries elsewhere that just seem like stuck in just one one display that just never seems mm. to change. Uh, so it's nice to see uh, your your commitment as a gallery to uh, to keep things uh, fresh uh, all the time. Yeah, it's important. Yeah, and um, so uh, where are we at? So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's, it's in, the, in the vagaries of television production and uh, being blinded by light sometimes. It's right. Hard. It's, uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we're, we're coming down to the, to the end of the show. And uh, I just want to uh, thank you uh, for coming on the show for us to talk about uh, the gallery. And, uh, and I wish uh, uh, Art and Soul Gallery as much success as it can uh, in, uh, in its continuing uh, efforts to promote art here in, in Southern Oregon. Well, thank you. And invite all of your viewers to come in and yes, definitely. see uh, the artwork. Yeah. So uh, I want to thank uh, Linda Hoffman-Snodgrass from Art and Soul Gallery. 
to uh, come onto the show to discuss the wonderful art and artists that are to be found at your gallery. And, and I want to encourage you, all the viewers, to make a trip to explore this wonderful gallery when you're in Ashland. I also want to thank our crew who have made it possible to put this program together and to thank RVTV uh, for their wonderful studio facility, which allows us to produce shows such as this one. If you'd like to become a studio producer and create your own public access show, you can contact RVTV to learn how. You can also watch the show on Tuesday evenings at 8 p.m. and Thursday evenings at 11.30 p.m. on Channel 15 of the Ashland Home Network and in the rest of Southern Oregon via Charter Cable on Channel 182. You can also find all episodes of Rogue Artisans and Crafters at archive.org. You can also visit RVTV online at rvtv.sou.edu to find live streaming of all RVTV shows. You can also follow our show on Facebook by visiting and liking our official show page. Just search for Rogue Artisans and Crafters. You can learn more about Art and Soul Gallery and their wonderful artists by visiting artandsoulgallery.com. I'm your host, Glamour Dave Nino, yes. and we will see you next time.